10 minutes before death by voodoo, by sparks of timeless inspiration. I feel it again. That creeping sensation, like ants marching beneath my skin, a prelude to the chaos that's about to unfurl within my very bones. Every moment is a tick towards torment, and I'm just waiting, waiting for the hands of an unseen clock to wrench my life apart, piece by piece. There's a silence that comes before the storm, isn't there? A lull that's almost deafening in its quietude. My heart hammers against my chest, trying to break free from the cage of my ribs that soon, too soon, will betray me. What is it like to feel your body turn against you? To have your very essence warped by an invisible puppeteer? I'm learning now. Learning as the first twist comes, a wrenching that's not quite pain yet, but a harbinger of agony to follow. I've heard of voodoo, of curses whispered in the dark, of dolls pinned with the spite of a scorned soul. But who? Who have I wronged so deeply? My mind races, a frantic surge through memories, faces, moments. There's Lisa, whose heart I broke. Could she? No, tears were her language, not malevolence. And there's Mr. Daniels, the neighbor whose cat I accidentally hit with my bike. But no, it was forgiveness he offered, not curses. The room spins, or is it my body bending? The first true wave of pain crashes over me, and I am nothing but a vessel for torment. My bones, they're singing a choir of discordant notes, each one a scream from deep within the marrow. I've become a grotesque symphony, conducted by an unseen maestro of misery. I want to cry out, to plead for mercy to an adversary I cannot name. But my voice, it's a trapped bird, flapping desperately inside a collapsing cave. I'm a spectacle of helplessness, a twisted figure that once stood tall and sure. My thoughts are splintered like my bones, shards of reason trying to piece together the puzzle of my pain. Time, once a friend, takes on with apathy as my form contorts. It's a slow dance of destruction, each movement more monstrous than the last. I'm a living exhibit of the macabre, a being slowly erasing itself from the realm of the recognizable. My body, it's not mine anymore. It's a canvas for suffering, painted with the violet hues of bruising and the stark white of bone that protests too much. What is it like to die without knowing your executioner? It's a solitary confinement within your own mind, a chamber where the echoes of your own confusion are your only company. I am fading, not with the grace of a sunset, but with the grotesque inevitability of a candle snuffed out by the wind. My consciousness flickers, a dying flame in the gale of my undoing. I reach for clarity, for a name, a reason, but it's like grasping smoke with bloodied, broken fingers. There's a sorrow here, in the unspoken narrative of my end. A story that will die with me, untold, misunderstood, maybe unmissed. The darkness is creeping in now a tide of ink rising to blot out the agony. I welcome it, even as I fear it, for it is the final curtain on this tragic play. My body, a mangled sculpture of flesh and bone, no longer holds the essence of who I was. I am but a whisper of a person, a footnote in the book of life that will go unread. And as I slip away, the last thing I cling to is a hope that this story, my story, finds its way into the light. That someone, somewhere, will unravel the threads of my demise and understand. Understand the fear, the pain, the bewildering journey from life to wherever I'm headed now. Goodbye, cruel stage. The play is over, and the actor takes his final, twisted bow. The end.